It seems like barrel twist rate is becoming a rather mysterious term recently. In reality, though, it doesn't need to be a mystery at all. Unfortunately, it's often just a misunderstanding. If you're interested in this topic, keep watching. I've got three or four points to help you understand barrel twist rate. Number one, a bullet needs to be stabilized if it's going to achieve good precision, good accuracy on the target. Number two, bullets are stabilized by the rifling. In fact, all projectiles are stabilized in flight by either fins, think of rockets and missiles, or through spin. And that is how we achieve um, stabilization for our bullets. Now there's a couple of different general rules of thumb when we're talking about spin or twist rate. And for example, let's take a look at two 168 grain bullets for the 308 Winchester. And when we're talking about twist rate within a given cartridge, these couple of rules really hold true pretty darn well. First of all, lighter or shorter bullets can stabilize with a slower twist rate. In other words, a 1 in 10, a 1 in 12, something like that would stabilize this bullet very easily. A 1 in 10 does stabilize this bullet very easily. Longer or heavier bullets these again are the exact same weight, but notice how this Nosler is so much longer than this spear bullet. So longer bullets, as a general rule, require more twist rate or faster twist rate. In other words, uh, something like a 1 in 9 might be required for much longer bullets. Well, this one officially should stabilize in a 1 in 10 uh, twist rate barrel, uh, but it doesn't. Now, one of the ways, of course, that you can uh, achieve uh, good stabilization if your twist rate is kind of on the edge of stabilization or unstable, uh, not stabilizing that bullet, is by speed. Uh, increasing the velocity can help achieve um, the, um, the stabilization necessary. But really, you want to make sure that you have a twist rate in your barrel that will stabilize the bullet that you're interested in. So, lighter and shorter bullets require or can stabilize with a slower twist rate. Longer, heavier bullets need a faster twist rate. Point number three is that you really can't over-stabilize a bullet. Now the 220 Swift that I really like to shoot uh, is an example that we probably need to talk about and this is probably the stories that got this whole idea started that that bullet is over-stabilized and it's a problem because of uh, this, that and the next thing. So what has happened years ago is that the 220 Swift kind of became a very famous cartridge because those bullets, and they still do, uh, travel at over 4,000 feet per second. There's very, very few uh, cartridges that can achieve that 4,000 foot per second threshold. 220 Swift is one of them. In fact, the 40 grain 220 Swift bullets that I'm shooting out of my Ruger number no. 1 rifle is traveling at 4,234 feet per second on average. Now, the twist rate of that little 40 grain bullet, or twist rate for that little 40 grain bullet in that Ruger number no. 1 is a 1 in 12. It's a slow twist rate. But hey, it's a very light and very short little bullet. So it stabilizes that very nicely. Now, years ago, when uh, varmint hunting was probably more popular than it is today, especially the uh, prairie dog and different things like that. Uh, that people were, uh, were shooting, and some, also some experimentation with long-range shooting and target shooting with the 220 Swift. Uh, what folks were noticing 
is that at range, maybe at four or five hundred yards, that those bullets were essentially disintegrating in midair. Now, why is that? So, folks say, oh, that's just a, it's an overstabilized bullet. They just disintegrate. They start flying all over the place and they disintegrate. That is probably not the cause. Well, the disintegration is a real deal, but I don't believe for a moment that it was disintegrating because it was overstabilized. Uh, what was really happening is that those bullets that are used in the 220 Swift, those varmint type bullets, are oftentimes they have very, very thin, light jackets. Okay? They are designed to um, have rather dramatic um, explosive action, as they say, the varmint grenade and those sort of things uh, when they hit their target. Of course, there's nothing that it's hitting at that 400 yards, but if you start slowing down that 220 Swift, and it starts getting into the transonic range, in other words, it's getting ready to go uh, subsonic, destabilizing effect can cause, and probably did cause, those bullets to kind of disintegrate in midair. I've never personally seen that, and I don't really know if that's ever been caught on film or people were maybe guessing that that was what was happening, but I did, you know, sometimes trying to shoot five, six hundred yards with my 220 Swift and I'd go up to a pretty large target and this is a sub MOA rifle big bull barrel on it and all that and there's not a round in it at 500 yards or 600 yards so I don't know where those bullets went to of course a little bit of wind on a 40 grain bullet and who knows where that thing is going to go but, um, but anyway let's get back to our talk about twist rates. Now, of course, a person could argue if you can't overstabilize a bullet, then why not make all rifles to use a one and one twist rate, one and two twist rate? Well, the reason why that's not done is number one, it's not necessary, and number two, it would be extremely expensive. And there's some discussion that the, the faster uh, twist rate or more rifling uh, in that barrel causes increased friction against the bullet, can slow it down, wears out the barrel faster, uh, all those sorts of things. But I think the reason why we don't see that is, is of course, you normally the companies are going to be, or the barrel makers are going to be utilizing a twist rate to affect or achieve stabilization of that bullet. And once they can do that with a 1 in 7 twist rate, let's say, for a 5.56 five, or 2.23, 1 in 10 twist rate for most normal bullets, common bullets with a 308, those sort of things, then, of course, there's no reason to uh, um, apply an even faster twist rate because, again, that stuff is expensive and certainly not even necessary. Now, I just alluded to that 1 in 7 twist rate that we're seeing very commonly in the 5.56 and 2.23 rifles today. Years ago, we're seeing a lot more 1 in 9 and those sort of things, but the twist rate has gotten faster. In fact, the 1 in 7 is what's on my IWI Tavor rifle. It shoots really, really well. And some of the new uh, ARs that we're looking at and using also have that 1 in 7 twist rate. Now, the reason why the 1 in 7 twist is becoming more common is because a lot of folks are moving away from that light 55 grain bullet, light and short 55 grain bullet, which was stabilized nicely, 1 in 9 type of twist, and they're opting for something more like a 69, 70, 75 grain bullet. That then is a longer bullet, it's long for caliber. And it then requires something more along the lines of a 1 and 7. Sometimes a 1 and 8 will stabilize those as well based on the particular bullet. But don't fall into the trap, under, into the misunderstanding that if you're, if you're going to shoot a 55 grain bullet, oh, now I need a 1 and 9 twist rate. Or, no, now I want to start shooting 69 grain or 17 grain bullets, so I got to you know, throw out this barrel and I got to get a 1 in 7 uh, or something like this. 
So um, it isn't like a barrel can only shoot, you know, a very narrow range of bullets. Only 69 and 70 grain bullets can be shot out of a 1 and 7 twist barrel. And only 55 grain bullets can be shot through this 1 and 9. That's not at all true. So to follow, the, follow this through, follow this through, through with me. A longer bullet, remember, requires a faster twist rate. If your rifle has a 1 and 9 twist rate, 556223, five, two, two, it probably will shoot 55 grain bullets beautifully. You put in a 69 or 70 grain bullet, 77 grain bullets that are also becoming popular, it won't shoot those very well. And it is correct then to say that that bullet hasn't been stabilized. The twist rate is too slow for that longer, heavier bullet. But I can take my IWI Tavor with a 1 in 7 twist rate and I can shoot, yes, beautifully. 69, 70 grain bullets, no problem. But you know what? I can also shoot those little 55 grain bullets out of it all day long and those shoot well also. So going back to that very important point number two, bullets are stabilized by the rifling and as a rule of thumb, lighter, shorter bullets will stabilize with a slower twist rate whereas heavier, longer bullets require a faster twist rate. Well, I hope I have cleared up some stuff for you in your understanding of barrel twist rates. Thanks for watching.